Good morning. We're tuning in from Costa Rica today. Uh, we're at a Vez Wellness Retreat Center where we're going to be hosting a bunch of people from around the world to heal their bodies, to learn about fascia and the fascia maneuvers. Um, so we're going to hop on live today. We'll do some movements together. And I'll also bring some people up on stage to have some conversations and work through some personal stuff. And uh, we'll start off with a movement while everybody comes into the room. And while you do, just leave a comment, what you're feeling in your bodies today, what you'd like to get out of today's live, and where you're from. I'm just down the street. Awesome. Nice and close. Yeah, it's really nice actually in Costa Rica. One of the things I noticed right away was when we landed, everybody was really happy that worked at the airport. And not only happy, but they looked healthy, which is pretty cool. She's been doing the fashion movers for some time now, and she's a Scorpio. So let's see what she has to say. Hi, Jason. How are you? Good, how are you? I'm doing well. What? Why don't we uh, why don't we sync up together and uh, and bring everybody into a de-stress state before we start? We'll do it with a hand and heart. So take your right hand, place it on your heart. Left hand on your head, and we're gonna breathe together. So breathe in through the mouth. Two. Three, in through the nose, two, three. I feel better already. <laughs> How are you feeling? Uh, me too. My heart rate rate was fluttering a little bit before we did that and hmm. brought everything back down. That's good. And uh, for everybody who does who don't know who you are, uh, where are you from and when's your birthday? Yeah, I am from Louisville, Kentucky. My birthday is November 11th. I am a step 20 Scorpio, so my step birthday was yesterday. Oh, what? Hold on, I'm moving, <laughs> I'm moving you. The birds are a little wild over there. <laughs> Happy belated. Thank you. How, how was it? Uh, I, I got to be in nature, and I actually got to be with my family, which I thought was funny, and because when I was born into this world, I was around my family. And so just to be able to be around them as the step change even happened, I just was also very grateful to, I, and I feel very secure and grounded in myself right now mm -hmm. too. I had a lot of really, really sweet epiphanies leading up all the way to my birthday last week. I learned, I was outside and I was dancing and I, and the sun was shining on me. And as, as I was dancing, all of a sudden I looked at the ground and I saw my shadow hmm. and I started dancing with my shadow. And as I was dancing with my shadow, my shadow started talking to me and it said that our, the shadow side of ourselves is meant to be played with and danced with and not taken so seriously. And as I stopped and as I observed my shadow, I felt the sun hitting me. The sun was just hitting me, so it was hitting my back. And I realized the shadow is really just casted because the sun is shining so bright on me and it's really warm. And so it creates this illusion. And if I look at it and I play into it, then it becomes a big deal, but it's really just meant to be fully embraced and flirted with. And so it was a really like sweet, tender, very sweet, tender birthday for that's, me. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. and, uh, 
20 degrees and that was on the full, full no new moon as well mm -hmm. yeah so new moons new intentions it's funny because my pluto line which is scorpio is in costa rica and mm -hmm. we're in costa rica it's the moon is in scorpio and the sun's in scorpio so i'm interested to see what happens <laughs> yeah the timing is interesting so what brings you up today because you booked uh or scheduled this live so what would you like to get out of it yeah i am in the fashion maneuver coaching program and i wanted to enhance those skills and get out there and also just gain more comfortability being behind the camera and interacting with people too mm -hmm. so do you want to guide us through some movements sure. do you want to move today sure yeah, let's well, do it let's move today <laughs> yeah i'm feeling and some movement i mean we were traveling all day yesterday so mm -hmm. let me take okay. off my socks and my shoes <laughs> it's... Mm. let's do anti-gravity so okay. we're gonna link our fingers together if you haven't done it before we're gonna link our fingers together we're gonna place it on the skin behind our neck behind our neck and we're gonna pull up on the skin of our neck with our fingers locking. And we're gonna pull up. I want you to pull your belly button up uh, to your spine. Pretend that you're holding a pee and then I want you to squeeze your butt cheeks and slowly look up to the sky. You're gonna feel your back stretching. We're gonna breathe in through our mouth. For two, three, through our nose, two, three, slowly bring your chin to your chest, feel everything move around in your back, breathe in through our mouth. Three, through our nose, two, three, we're, we're going to look to the right like we're swimming, breathing in through our mouth, and we're going to breathe down and out, breathe in like we're swimming and looking to the left, down and out. Breathe in to the right, down, in to the left, down, in to the right, down, to the left, down. We're going to now stick our bum back like we're putting our butt to a wall, and then I want you to Rock your weight so that your your weight is are, is in the balls of your feet. We're gonna breathe in to the right like we're swimming, breathing in, and breathe down and out. In to the left like we're swimming, down and out. To the right, down, left, down, right. Down, left, down. You can get into a full squat. We're gonna do that as deep as you can. You can put your elbows between your legs, that's great. Breathing in through the mouth. Two, three, three. Up first, and one, three, three at a time. Unwind. Oh, I already did. 
did that today, so that was like extra deep. <laughs> oh, that felt good. How do you it's feel? one of my favorite ones. Yeah. How does everybody feel in the comments? Let us know what you feel. All right. So, what's next? Mm -hmm. Let's do some ear pulls. I like these lately. Sure. Mm -hmm. So well, this is my left hand. I'm going to grab the top of my right ear. My right hand is going to grab the lobe underneath. And I'm going to twist so my right hand is going to go forward and my left hand goes back. I open and close with my mouth. Then breathe in through the mouth. Two. No. Two. And three. Ooh. Mm. Yeah. Let's do the other. Ear. Right hand grabs the top of the left lobe, left hand grabs the bottom. I'm gonna pull and twist. Sorry. Open and close your mouth. Move around. Breathing in through the nose. Two. Three. Mm. How are we feeling, y'all? That feels good. Mm -hmm. I love that one. It's my favorite. It always opens up so much of my pathways right here, and I'm just like, oh. Yeah, if you, if you can, I put socks on your hands and mm -hmm. do it. Trust okay. me. Just trust me. You can, like, you put them on both hands, and you can do the other one, too. And you can really pull your ear and it, like you get like a massive rush. It's like 10 times better. I, I'm going to have to do that. I don't know why I have always been so resistant and putting socks on my ears, but. <laughs> well, no, you don't put them on your ear. You put them on your hand. Yeah. So it's like a glove, right? Because a t-shirt, you kind of, it flops around. But if you have a, if you have socks, you actually can really grip it. Let's do it. <laughs> I don't even own socks. So let's do it. I'll do the I'll do the other one, but I'll do it without, which is my okay. Hands. Okay. <laughs> and we'll grab the top of our ears and pull them over. Wow. Yeah. It's funny. I don't even have socks anymore. I don't. <laughs> I'm so minimal. I've got uh, I've got five pairs of shorts, six shirts that are all the same. Do you wear sandals all the time, or? Yeah, I have a, uh, I have barefoot sandals. Uh huh. Uh, the, or I wear bare feet. Depends where we go. Uh huh. Do you wear Ooh. the barefoot shoes barefoot? Yeah. Yeah. Is that how they're meant to be worn? Oh, there's a bunch of quatties. Uh huh. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can. Well, it depends. Like, uh, some of them you gotta wear in and. Uh, they can chafe a little bit, so having a sock to start it off. But um, like when I first got the when I like my vivo bare my vivo barefoot, I was uh, taking some skin off, and uh, so I would recommend socks when you're wearing them in. But later, like now, I wear them barefoot, no problem. Um, and then the sandals I use are Earth Runners. Sorry, there's like monkeys or something throwing things out of the tree. <laughs> I, I love Costa Rica. It's such an interesting place. Yeah, it's like, uh, it's, it, it, it feels, it feels like it's untouched land, even though there's places to go and stay. Yeah, you're still in, still in the wild. But yeah, I would, uh, I would go barefoot as much as you can. Because even with 
barefoot sandals, barefoot shoes, you're not touching the ground. And the ground grounds you. It helps ground your body. So Yeah. yeah. I love the ground. So next. Uh, okay, let's do let's do no sinus stuff. I live in a valley and sometimes there's pollen everywhere and our nose gets yeah okay so my this, yeah so my right hand is going to grab the left side of my face and i'm going to pin and lock my thumb my cheek so i get a nice pull my left hand is going to push back on my cheekbone and then i'm going to breathe in through my mouth and i like to swing when i do this two Three, breathe in slow. And then, then slowly through the nose. Two. Three. Ooh. Wow. I love that. <laughs> yeah. That was a good one. All right. My left fingers pull on my nose, lock my thumb in place. Right hand push back on my cheek. The mouth. Love that one. <sighs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can smell the fresh air. <laughs> I know, and I had, you know, I didn't do the maneuvers for like six weeks, so I uh, I took time off because I I'm all about contrast as a learning experience. If you do something all the time, you forget what it does for you. And so when, when we went back to Canada, I didn't do it for like six weeks. And then when we came back here, I've done it every single day, every morning at like 5, 6 a.m. And now I'm, it's funny how it works because you do like 10 minutes when you're starting. And then you find yourself in 15 minutes. And then you find yourself in 20 minutes. And then you're in like a 45-minute practice and you don't even, you're not even trying to, but you're just starting to build on it. And here I am into my second session in the day. And I've been doing it now for, I think, 10 days straight or 15 days straight. And I, I can really feel the difference. Like it, the sleep, uh, significantly deeper. The calmness and relaxation in my body is significant. Like it's, it's, it's interesting because even when you've done it for that long, Paula, like you forget what it does for you. Like I, because I've done it for four years. And then I, if I don't take a break, I don't have the same appreciation for it when I'm doing it every single day. So now into my second session today, I'm really feeling like the impact that it's had over the last 14 days. Yeah, I, I love hearing you say that because I take little breaks too, just to be like, what is my body gonna, like, what is it gonna do? And I do feel a difference. My body, <laughs> my body really, I feel calmer and more grounded and my sleep is way more, way, way more deep. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially um, like starting that habit is the hardest part. You know, it's like do two minutes, do two minutes, and then you find yourself accidentally doing five, you know, and mm -hmm. then, then the next day you do another five, and then it's seven, and then it's 18, and then it's, and it just keeps building. Mm -hmm. I, it's like wake up and like go. It's like yeah. I have to like almost like wake up and like <laughs> do totally twisted first thing in the morning, and I'm like, okay, I got this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's do another one. I'm enjoying it. Yeah, let's do chin. Let's pull our chin. Okay. Do the. So my left hand is pinning and locking my chin. So my right hand is grabbing the left side of my chin and my thumb is locking it. My left hand is pushing back. Breathing in. Three. So right now. Two. 
Three. It's nice to have mm. a beard. I have lots of grip. <laughs> <laughs> I've always thought it'd be so cool to have a beard. <laughs> yeah, it feels nice. Oh, it's Okay. Uh -huh. I'll do the other side, my left hand, grab my the right side of my chin, my thumb locks into place, my right hand push back, breathe in through the mouth. Two. Three. Through the nose. Two. Mm. And the, the squirrels here have a like an orange belly. Ooh, are they are they brown squirrels? We have gray squirrels here. Gray on top and orange belly, but they're chasing each other. So I love nature. So when I'm in, with like I'm like butterfly, squirrel, you know, it's just it's beautiful. Every time oh, them. they're glimpses of you. Yeah, mm -hmm. and they just bring joy. We actually saw monkeys, which I've been waiting for all year. <laughs> That's fun. Yeah. This join, what is a chin maneuver? Actually, you can do the fascia facelift on our YouTube. And I do a chin twist and also a chin opener on there and a bunch of other ones. It's a really good mm -hmm. clap. All right, Paula, what's next? Do a jaw release. Okay. So, our right hand, you can do two or three fingers. It's going to go on the meaty part of our jaw. Our right hand is going to go backwards. Our left hand goes forward. Our fingertips are going to press in. And then our arms, our elbows are naturally going to meet down. I open it and close my mouth a few times. Breathing in through our mouth. Three. Through the nose. So it's funny when I, I do this one in public and people always look at me funny. <laughs> Feels so good though. I know. You do it in the restaurant or something and everybody's always looking at you. I, you know, the first time I did this was about a year ago and I started crying. I was holding so much tension in my jaw. Yeah. 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 For me, I had a lot of tension in my jaw. I had a lot of held anger and like didn't speak my truth a lot. So there was a lot in there. And we did a, there's an old release back in the table therapy days when we, before the maneuvers. And we would actually put our finger and drill it back into the, you know, the inner jaw release. Uh huh. Oh. And when you do it on somebody, it feels amazing, but it hurts like crazy. Like the, the one when you do it yourself is different because you hit a different angle and you're pinning differently and you're doing it. So you can kind of mitigate that pain, but that one is crazy. The tongue, there actually is a tongue maneuver. Actually, I did that in, um, if you go to the facelift playlist on our YouTube channel, in the Kasamaya Khan Tulum class, there's a fascia facelift class there I did a tongue maneuver towards the end of the class, and uh, and you can try that one. It's really good for the neck. Okay, what's next? Can we do the tongue maneuver now? <laughs> if you want to. <laughs> but people are gonna need something to grab their tongue with. Oh. Yeah. Mm. You can get your shirt I mean, I, if you want. I've got, some, I've got no. something. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's do it. Okay. Okay. Uh, you grab the okay. tongue. <laughs> you grab it. What are we gonna do? Um, and we twist it. Do we twist it? Which way do we twist it? Is it clockwise or counterclockwise? Feel it. Which okay. one feels better? Mine feels better rotating the left up. Uh huh. This is getting weird. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so you want to pull your tongue and then rotate one of the sides up more so you're twisting it. 
Uh-huh. Uh. Oh. <laughs> uh. But I don't, don't use detergent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but what? Laundry magnet. You got to get laundry magnets. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of them? I have heard of them. Yeah, they're awesome. Because what happens is people put detergent in the clothes or in the, in the washer and it clogs the pores of your clothing. Mm -hmm. So your clothing can't breathe properly. But then also that clogs your pores. So then your skin can't breathe properly. So when we first came down, uh, like if I go to an Airbnb or hotel or something, if I use a towel, I feel like my clogs can't, my, my skin can't breathe. All, all the pores are clogged from the detergent. So I don't even use laundry detergent. I just use laundry magnets. And what they do is they, um, they create a magnetic field and it, it pulls the, the electrons or the dirt the negative electrons, kind of like the earth. The earth grounds you and it pulls all of the negativity, all the negative energy off. It does it for the clothing and it, it works. And then you can use essential oils and those essential oils make it smell nice. Yes, laundry magnets. Mm -hmm. ah, okay. At the end of the tongue pull, my tongue was like pulsing. Yeah, like... yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it can hurt a little bit. I mean, just don't let Gary grab your tongue. <laughs> He's like, hey, hey, I got an I got an idea. You want to try it? And before he tells me the idea, I unfortunately agreed to it. And uh, it's really funny because when we used to when we used to create the maneuvers, like we would just, you know, it's it's kind of like um, kids, you know. You're just you're you're. It's like when you found something, you know, and you're like, oh my god, I found something. Let's try this, right? And so he'd be like, hey, Jay, I got an idea. I got an idea. Come over here. You want to try something? And I'm like, sure. And he's like, okay, stick out your tongue. I'm like, what? He's like, stick out your tongue. And he grabs it. And when he does it, he does it like 10 times what other people do. It hurt, man. It really hurt. But it felt good. And that was the creation of the tongue maneuver. Um, but, uh, yeah, so it's we actually have photos and videos of, like, the first time we ever did some of this stuff. And we'll go back in to it and, and find some of it and start sharing it over the next little while on our social media because it's just fun to see like where did we come up with this maneuver where did we come up with that like how did we even get to that well when the clinic in the clinical days it was one of the table therapy releases so someone would lie on a table they would have one person on either side and then that the, the practitioner would grab their wrist and they would be pinned against the table and they would move it through different ranges of motion right and uh, our goal was to get the therapy off the table so we could help somebody standing without a table and then ultimately so that someone could do it on their own. And, uh, and so we're drinking, you know, we're, we're having our morning coffee. We drank coffee at the time. We're drinking coffee on our, on our porch in the morning at 7 a.m. And I'm like, I have an idea. Like, we got to try this. And so he grabbed my wrist and we actually have the video and we have a photo of it. I'll, I'll share it uh, with you. It's uh. And it shows like where we go through the whole process of discovering that and then teaching people to do it on their own. Do you want to do that one? Do you want to guide it? Yeah, let's do, do it. Do okay. So take your hand out. You're going to, your other hand is going to pull down on the fingertip. So you're going to stretch your wrist back. You're going to bring your elbow to your body and then you're going to twist your wrist out, outside of you. And then your shoulder is just going to press up as your hand presses down. And we'll breathe in through the mouth. Two. Three. Through the nose. Three. I always get like feel so much release right in here. It also will open up the calf and the ankle because they're connected. These two mm -hmm. are good, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. my wrist 
is my foot, my ankle, sorry, my hand, my foot, my wrist, my ankle, my forearm, my calf, and then my humerus, my femur. They're, mm -hmm. they're linked. So if I change pressure here, I'm going to change pressure here. And that's your right arm and yeah. your left leg. The opposite. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because when you move, think of it like a balloon, right? So if I step my left foot forward and I have my right arm up, I'll do it like this, actually. Pressure in my balloon goes this way. So if I don't put my hand up, the pressure wants to pull me that way, right? Mm -hmm. So my body has to find a way to rebalance so I don't fall over. Like if I'm like this, it's going to go that way. So my body will find a way to rebalance itself. So, for example, one way is I'm falling to the left. I might move my shoulders to the right and my head to the left. So I found a balance point. That's one way to do it, right? Now, mm -hmm. another way is using the pressure in my arm to come up on the opposite side. So if it comes up on the opposite side, now I'm generating equal and opposite pressure from one side to the other. So it's a balloon. And that's that's how we walk and move. And you're generating pressure. So when you do a movement like that, like if someone has ankle issues, knee issues, calf, and they do that release, that'll help. And then, so does that mean that the left side of the head is connected to the right arm? Yes. Or like how? Yeah, yeah, the mm -hmm. opposite. So zone one, you'll have opposite mm -hmm. in zone two, and then opposite in zone three. Mm -hmm. So it'd be boom, boom, boom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's always opposite. So zone one is your head, right? Mm -hmm. Zone two is the neck down to your pelvic floor, or your, mm -hmm. a little bit above your pelvic floor, and then your pelvic floor down to your feet is zone three. So if I change pressure on the side of my head here, it's gonna change pressure on the opposite hip and then on the same side ankle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the jaw is the same as the ankle here. It's the same angle, right? So mm -hmm. if, I, if I change pressure on the jaw here, it's gonna change pressure on my hip on the opposite side, but it'll actually change the pressure on the side of the foot there. Mm -hmm. Someone just asked, like, what's a good maneuver for their right knee? So if we're applying the principles, we could do a work on our left elbow to help out the right knee. Yes. So to help out whoever that was, a maneuver you can do is you can take your left hand on your right shoulder, take your right hand on your elbow, and you can twist it in whichever direction is tighter. And then you can, I like to pull my body around to the right. And then breathe through our mouth. Two. Three. Through our nose. Two. And three. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Thanks, Paula. And, uh, mm -hmm. You're right. If you change pressure in the elbow, you change pressure in the knee. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, it's, it's funny. The body's opposite. So, like here would be behind here. Well, it makes sense because when we're walking, if you pay attention to yourself, we're like we're we're supposed to be opposite arm to leg. Yeah. And so it it makes sense when you when you explain it like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to do the other? Other side? Yeah, the other side. So we'll take, since we just did our left, we'll take our right hand, put on our left shoulder. Our left hand grabs the elbow, twist it either right or left, whichever is tighter. And twist. Breathe in through the mouth. Two. Three. Our nose. Two. And three. Oh, that felt good. Mm -hmm. And what I like. Someone. Oh, mm -hmm. go ahead. Oh, 
Oh, someone just asked what part of your head would be your knee? Uh, right here. The cheeks? Yeah. Like, but okay. the cheekbone right on the front. On the front. Okay. Yeah. And then, uh, and then one is what I was going to say is when you're in that position, mm -hmm. like we, we do the maneuver, right? But you can also walk because as you walk, think of it like this. Yes. If I hold, hold your arm and it can't move, right, and you walk, the opposite arm has to swing more to move forward. So you end up moving, you end up moving more with everything else because one area can't move. And if you, so what that means is if I make it so something can't move, like my elbow, right, if my elbow joint can't move here and I walk, the shoulder has to move more. The wrist, the fingers, the ankle, the hip, the joints in my head, everything has to move slightly more to compensate for the fact that this can't move. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Like if this, if this part of the, if, if, if this joint would move you know, a centimeter through that range of motion, and it can't anymore, I might move an extra two millimeters in my wrist, an extra two millimeters in my shoulder, an extra five in my opposite hip, you know, and so there's different areas of the body that are going to move to compensate for that movement. So that's why pinning and locking the fascia is super important. That's why it's one of the fundamental laws when it comes to working with fascia. Yeah, because it sounds like the pinning and locking combined with the movement allows for oxygen to move around the body via the pressure, right? Well, the, the, that's another principle. So there's, there's two at work. One is, okay, they always say this when you're working with the body. If you have a, you know, the, if you have a tight joint, the one above and the one below moves more and is hypermobile. That's what they, they say. Right? If one can't move, then the one above and below moves more to compensate for that movement. Okay. Now, what you're saying, which, is, which I'm agreeing with, and I'm saying here's a fundamental law to working with the body. Pin that area of the body and move through it. But pin it like you're pinning the fascia. And now the one you're talking about uh, is pressure distribution. So uh, when you move, you move blood, oxygen, nutrients, uh, through the body, right? Like a tube of toothpaste. Imagine your body was a tube of toothpaste and you were moving that toothpaste through different areas, okay? So if, or balloon animals, also a really good visualization. Like imagine like my hand and then it's tied and then my wrist or my forearm and it's tied on either side. Then here, have you seen balloon animals where they're like, right? Imagine that for a second. Now, where they're tied is always at the joint. That's where the most pressure builds. Mm. So what we're doing, when you breathe and when, you, when you're bringing pressure into an area, it's like you're moving the air and the fluid and the nutrients to a specific area because it can't go to another one. It's like if there was a dam or a blockage in one because you're creating it, it forces it to go another way. If you have, if you have a river, and one area has a lot of resistance, it's gonna naturally go to the area with least resistance. So if you create the resistance by pinning it or by holding it or by locking it, then your body will by default choose the, the, the least resistance. So uh, uh, and there's another example of this. So if I had a tube of toothpaste, right? And you're at your last bit, there's none left. So imagine this is my tube of toothpaste and this is the head where it comes out. So I've got toothpaste here and none left here. So what I want to do is I want to pin the toothpaste at the end and I roll it up, right? Or you can use the counter, you know, where you like, you can either move it against the counter or you can, or you can roll it. Now imagine when you're locking the fingers like this, you're actually rolling that tube. Now all of the toothpaste moves into the wrist and the forearm it's starting to move forward now 
as I bring the elbow into my body, like this, I'm pushing all of the toothpaste into the elbow joint now. Now when I bring the hand up to here, I'm squeezing that last bit and it pushes all of it from the elbow up into the shoulder. Now the pressure can go out into the rest of my body. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when you're pinning an area of the body and it can't move, it forces the fluid, the oxygen and the nutrients and the pressure to move into other areas of the body. And that's really what we're doing. So if you look at a, another example, a little bit more complex now, pretzel squat. Okay, let's, uh, let me just show, I won't get into the movement, but I'll show the, the parameters of it. So how do you pin that tube of toothpaste with your foot, right? So if I'm standing on my foot, if I put, pressure on my foot immediately I feel if I put all my weight on it I feel more fluid go into the calf right so just by bending if you bend your knee you can feel the pressure change in the lower leg so what we like to do is we like to pin the foot actually I'll do a slightly different one if you pin the foot and you turn away from it and you torque it now you're pinning it in a rotational fashion, so you get two dimensions. Then you squat. As you squat, the, no more fluid can be in here. Like you, you've got the most amount that can exist in here. As you bend more, it's pushing the pressure up into the ankle. As you bend more and more, it pushes up into the, into the calf. And as you bend the knee past 90 degrees, it pushes all the pressure into the hip. So. What you're doing is you're using the ground as the pinning force instead of your hand like you would in this movement. Now, the, there's two ways we're doing that. When you add that rotation, you're adding a different dimension to the movement because the body moves in rotation. So if you don't rotate, you don't really get the pressure that's around the bone. There's, a pressure, there's pressure right around the bone. When you torque it and twist it, what happens is the bone on the inside goes like this, right? So you create a torque pressure on the, imagine I was twisting the, if I was twisting like this, right? So the, imagine that bone here, it's getting twisted or torqued in that direction. The body naturally has to balance itself. So if I twist the inside this way, the upper layers have to rotate the opposite way to meet a middle point. Mm. Mm -hmm. so, so because it's like a, it's like an axis so whatever's in the middle goes one way whatever's on the outside goes the other way so that it, it moves in harmony okay. so if you torque around if you torque around the bone so if i create that torquing pressure and then my body will naturally torque back because it's trying to return it to the same position it's trying to find the midpoint it's always trying to find the midpoint or the point with least resistance so it so the idea is, is I can actually twist my arm as much as I want outwards, creating that torque, and then I can twist purposefully my hand inwards. So I create that feeling on my own. Now yeah. I can pull my arm down and simultaneously I can pull my bones through. So I I'm creating when I pull the arm when I pull the upper layers with my hand so this this movement what I'm doing is I'm rotating it one way then I pull my arm down I turn my bones this way and I pull my arm up you see how it's now going like this it's that spiral length and contraction movement that's happening that's why regular stretching doesn't work because regular stretching is one dimensional you're not getting you're not getting that rebalancing rotational force that's what's happening here so when you rotate out and you rotate in you pull down and you pull up you create that lengthening that's why the fascia releases because it feels safer because it's actually in a balanced it's in a balanced rotational position as it's moving 
Does that make sense? Yeah, um, it, it makes so much sense. It's fascinating that you say that it, that's the difference between stretching and fascial maneuvers is the, it is the, uh, like the twisting that happens within and like, as you were like, as you broke down and explained that when we twist our, our wrist out, we create that motion by creating, by bringing our other hand in, we just force the body in hyper motion to continue to do what it does. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Am, am I lagging or is it your side? I don't, my camera shows me clear. It shows you lagging a little bit. Okay, uh, one sec. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see if uh see if it gets better here. Okay, he looks clear, she looks blurry. So it was yours a little bit. Okay. Well, let's let's actually do the movement so people can feel what we're talking about. So mm -hmm. Oh, I hear the howling monkeys. Okay, so take the right hand, place it on the bicep, just above the elbow. Twist the skin back, back like as much as you can. Don't be shy, okay? Then you're gonna turn your hand inwards or all the bones opposite, like that. Pull down, like you're trying to pull your arm off your body. And then you're gonna pull the bones through so your shoulder comes back to regular height. Okay, now move around and breathe. And even go above. Okay, and relax. Oh, okay, let's do the other side. Feel your arm for a second. You might feel really long, loose, light. You might feel, feel like feel your lung. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> you might get tingling in your hands. You might feel a lot of like, like charged or more awake or like you can breathe better. Feels like okay. There's like a rush. Yeah. <laughs> there's just so a let's rush. Do the, yeah. Okay, so let's do more. So grab above the elbow, turn outwards on the right arm now. So left hand, grab the right arm, twist out. Twist the bones in, pull down, and then pull your arm through. And move around slowly and breathe. And I sometimes even move around like everything, but I'm still keeping that tension pattern. Okay. okay, shake it off. I feel more awake after that, actually. Mm -hmm. So that's why movement is the fastest and most powerful healing modality, because we're combining we're combining movement, breath, and the body knows how to move. But what happens is if, if I massage an area, the moment I grab it here and I start massaging, imagine this is a bunch of like gel or the toothpaste, right? If I just push a little bit of the toothpaste with one of my fingers, the fluid will go like this and it'll disperse in all directions does that make sense so if i if i massage here and i push the fluid can go this way this way this way this way and that way right because i'm not pinning i'm not pinning anything so it mm -hmm. has 
your body has water. It's water. Fascia is water that's structured and it can move and change composition based on what's going on. So if I massage or if I'm massaging, pushing into here, what I'm doing is the, the fluid is just moving in different directions, but it doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't change anything. That's why you have to pin. If I pin one part and I pull, and I'm pulling more the fascia, the, the skin, then what's happening is the fluid can't move on one area, and now I'm creating leverage and pulling in another. So I'm guiding, I'm guiding the fluid to move into different directions rather than pushing it. Because if you push it, it'll go in different directions. It'll go all over the place. And then the body, because I'm pushing into it really hard, starts to create a defense mechanism, which it wants to push back. And a lot of the time, like if I dig my elbow into you and I push my elbow in and I do it, I do it for three or four or five minutes, eventually your body will relax. But what happens is your body pushes back and resists. It's really tight. It pushes back. It hurts a lot. I'm doing it for three minutes. And then all of a sudden it releases. Well, why? I believe that what's happening is the body has tension or pressure in that area of the body, uh, in that zone. And by pushing on it, it's pushing back at the equal and opposite force until it can no longer match me because it gets tired, it gives up. It, for whatever reason, it says, fine, you win, and it goes and it relaxes. But how much force and damage did I do in the process of trying to out compete my body? Does that make sense? It's like a tug of war. And I'm pushing it, and I'm pushing it. I'm like, come on, release, release, release. And then finally it goes, fine. I'll let go. But now it's bruised, and now there's, you know, now there's inflammation, and now the body has to recover in getting that release. But if I do it through movement, the body's naturally moving the pressure around on its own. But if you pin, you guide where the pressure goes. If I do this, the pressure is not going to go here. That means all the pressure is going to go here. So I, I get to choose where the pressure moves and how the fluid's going to move through my body by pinning it. That's the difference. So massage at this point hurts my body. Like when people touch my body and try and massage me, my, I immediately go out, no, and I tighten up because the body starts to go into a defense mechanism. Am I safe? Have you ever tried to tickle someone? Okay, if you tickle someone, and they put their hand there, it's not ticklish anymore. Wow. Have you ever noticed that you, have you, ever noticed that you can't tickle yourself? Why? Yes. Why can't you tickle yourself? I, I feel like, I don't know, because it's me, I know it's coming. <laughs> yeah, the body feels safe when it's participating. If there's an oh. external input, my body for the first three minutes goes, am I safe? What is this input? What do I need to do? How should I adapt? What calculations should I do? Should I raise my blood pressure? Should I start building adrenaline? You know, so the body starts to react based on the inputs externally. But if I'm the one doing it, the body naturally knows it can flow better with it. So is tickling like in the laughing response, uh, actually like a fear response? Like is like is tickling like what? I, I'm, I don't, to be honest, I'm not, I'm not going to pretend like I know why we are ticklish. It might honestly be a playful mechanism built into the body. It mm -hmm. may be, I, I don't know. Um, the other one is it could be a highly sensitive area because of restrictions, because of trauma, because of, I'm not sure, or because our organs, you know, usually you're ticklish. Let's, let's think about this. Where are most people ticklish? Like the arm armpits, armpits ribs, the ribs, the hips. Under, around the the feet, all oh, the feet. So there's something, there's something about it. I don't know what it is, but it might be like where pathways go or where organs are most active or, yeah, maybe it's just a playful mechanism and there's nothing crazy about it. That we don't need to go super deep into it, but I think it's important that um, to, to understand that my body, when I'm moving it and I'm manipulating it, it will feel safe. And, and when someone else is, there's, a, there's an integration period.
I have to feel safe with that person. I have to build a relationship with that person. I have to breathe and calm down while they're working on me. There's that integration. And that's why a lot of the time, if you don't like the practitioner or the massage therapist, or you don't feel safe and someone tries to work on you, you tighten automatically. If someone has a lot of trauma and you touch their body, just touch their body. They'll go. Yeah. Because that's a reaction of I'm not safe. The last time I was touched like that, I was hurt. And it goes right into that memory. So what we're doing is we're working, we're make, we're helping the body move pressure around so that it redistributes the pressure in the body so that everything will start to flow again. Once that happens, then you reduce your stress. Once you reduce your stress, then you feel safe. And once you feel safe, you can release the trauma and the emotions. Hmm. You want to do more movements? That was good. Feel? Mm -hmm. I feel good. You know, it's, I really wasn't feeling like going live this week. I don't know why. Maybe it's just a new environment or the energy or I feel very introverted right now. So being public and talking and educating is interesting. Like, like the first two days of Scorpio that I did a live, I literally said, like, I don't feel like being here. I want to relax, lie down. And uh, now we're in the 20 degrees and normally I'm like, I want to be out and talking and teaching and helping people, but I still feel introverted. I think it's just the energy right now for me. And uh, th also the about talking about the body feeling safe. Like when you go to a new environment, if you walk into a room for the first three minutes, you can smell something. But the moment that you can't smell anymore is the the moment that your body integrated the smell in the room and it created a new it created it basically neutralized it so that you can smell any new inputs it's a safety mechanism like if there was a fire in the corner of the room you wouldn't smell it if there were too many senses in the room that you were smelling at all like the, the entire time so basically once it neutralizes it you're more aware of new inputs into your environment so when you move and you change environments your body has to integrate over a three-day period to say, where am I? Am I safe? What's the air like? What's the food like? What is my microbiome doing? What's the water like? What, who are the people here? What is the bed like? So there's so many different new inputs that the body has to use a lot more energy to feel safe when you first arrive. So by the fourth day, you finally feel like, oh, I'm here finally feel like I'm integrated but we're still on day we just arrived yesterday afternoon so a couple more days and I'll feel I'll have that feeling where it's like okay my body no longer has to check am I safe because there was a noise am I safe because of the that smell am I safe because of that it's happening subconscious I'm not even guiding it it just happens with or without me and over the next few days my body's gonna get integrated into the space but I can feel the, the, the amount of energy that I'm using subconsciously to feel safe in my environment and make sure that everything's okay is higher than my normal day-to-day -day routine. So in my normal day-to-day -day routine, I'm in a higher state of flow. I feel more energized. I feel more confident. I feel more driven. So the energy of Scorpio plus that feeling of being in a new environment, I'm integrating it. So thank you for being here and, and for sharing and, and coaching today. And uh, it was really nice having you on because it brought in a, a good energy for me today I thank you for being here too I wouldn't be here without you so grateful to share the energy share the love share the vibrations mm -hmm. yeah and where are you hosting classes we might get kicked off right now with Denise if she goes live okay uh, but where are you hosting classes so people can find you Okay, I'm hosting classes in Louisville, Kentucky at the Goodall Art Gallery, and I am also hosting classes on Zoom. Uh, you can reach out to me in my direct messages to figure out how to get on my Zoom class, and um, or if you're in the Mighty Network app, uh, you can go into the community events, and I've got um, Coach Paula's playing with the basics on Sundays at, at 3.30 p.m., so... Come play with me. Awesome. Thank you, Paula. I'm just mm -hmm. uh, 
I'm going to catch up on the comments here, see if we missed anything. Thank you, everybody. Uh, we're going to hop. I think Denise is hosting a class right now, and then Gary's going to hop on a live afterwards. So we look forward to seeing you all in his live, and have a great week. I'll see you all on Thursday. Later, y'all. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Paula. Take care. Bye. Thank you.